Hey everyone and welcome to another video and in this video I'm going to show you how you can set up push notifications through your simulator. Now pre Xcode 11.4 the only way you could do and test push notifications was through your device. So this is really a big plus and I'm excited to show you how to set this up. So if we look at the Xcode 11.4 release notes and we'll do a search for push notifications we can get an idea of how we can start to implement this and it says that simulator supports simulating remote push notifications including background content fetch notifications. Now the first thing to mention is that you can achieve this in two different ways. One is through dragging and dropping your APNS file which is basically your representation of your notification onto your simulator or you can do this through the command line on your terminal using this command. So I'm going to show you both ways and a few little tricks uh, that will make this a lot easier. So let's set up an Xcode project and we're just going to set up a single view app and I'm going to call this simulator notifications test and let's create that. And the first thing we need to do when we're going to use notifications is actually ask the user for permission. So if you go to your app delegate and we're going to write a function here called register for push notifications and what we want to do is use this un user notification center dot current dot request authorization and then we're going to be asking for the alert the sound and the badge permissions and this will give us a completion handler with the granted states or the permission state and whether there's been an error so what we want to do here is just type in granted and then we can have the error as well and what we'll do is we'll print the state of the user permission here just to tell us whether it's been successful and when we start the app we want to call this so we're going to come into this did finish launching with options and we can just say register for push notifications here so now if we run the app first thing we should see here is a pop-up and it says simulator notifications test would like to send you notifications and if we allow this you can see that our uh, console down here it prints uh, the permission state which is true so we've had it has been granted so the next thing we want to do if we come back to our release notes here is we are going to first show you how to do this through the command line and there's this command here so what we can do is we can create our APNS file and I actually did this earlier just to show you. So what this uh, really does is uh, describes the notification. It has to be in valid JSON format. And I'm going to show you the basic thing we need here. And what you need to do is have an APS key. And in this APS key, you need uh, an object which will contain um, the different uh, properties that you want in your notification. So here we have uh, the alert key, and this will be the title of the notification. Uh, the sound will just be the default sound and the badge number as well. So if we then use this in the command in our release notes, we can see what happens. So if we come to our terminal and we type in xc run sim ctl push, and you've got this device um, placeholder here, and this is asking for a device ID. Now, if you only have one simulator open, you can actually just type booted, and this will target the simulator that's currently running. If you have more than one open and you want to target a specific device, you can come back to your Xcode and you can come up to window at the top, and I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's just the second last one along. So window, and then if you go to devices and simulators, you can scroll down to the device that you want to target, and you can copy the device ID here and put that in instead of the booted parameter. And the other way you could do it is you could type um, xc run simctl list and this will give you a list of all the devices you can target. So if we clear that and we go back to our command xc run simctl um, and then we look at our release notes we can say push booted and then uh, what you need to do now is if you do not include a key that um, has the bundle identifier you need to type the bundle identifier in here 
So I'll show you on that way first. So we can come to our product settings, copy our bundle identifier and paste that into the terminal. And then the last thing you need is the name of the actual APNS file. And I've called mine APNS.APNS. And if we come to our app and we put it into the background and we press enter, you can see here that we get our notification at the top, which is exactly what we wanted and that's working well. So just on that note where um, I said that if you include the bundle identifier in your APNS file, you do not need to include it in your command line. So what we can do is we can copy this key here and we can go back to our APNS file. And the first key we're going to have here is now simulator, if I can type it correctly, simulator target bundle. And what we're going to do is paste our bundle identifier into here. So we'll copy that and paste that in and make sure we have a comma. And then we're just going to space that correctly. And if we now do this command again, but without our bundle identifier, you will get the same result. So it's just a bit shorter. So if we look at our simulator and we press enter, we get the same result. And also, um, now that we've added this simulator target bundle key, we can drag and drop our APNS file into our simulator, and this will also give us the same result. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our desktop where I have my APNS file saved, and we're gonna drag that into the simulator. And again, you get the result that you want. Now, the final thing I'm gonna cover here is if we open the app, and we try with the simulator, or uh, rather the command line to send this again, you do not get it showing. So I'm gonna show you how you can actually show this in the foreground as well. So if you come back to your Xcode, you go to your app delegate, and what we're going to do is we're going to make sure through an extension that the app delegate conforms to our UN and user notification center delegate. And we want to implement will present Let's just make sure we get this one right. We'll present notification. And we want to then call our completion handler with the relevant types of notification we want. And then we need to set our delegate, which we can do before we register. So we can say UN user notification center dot current dot delegate is going to be equal to our app delegate. And once you do this and you rerun the app, and then you go to your command line and you run the command again, you can see now that it's showing in the foreground. So that's again really useful and I hope that these tips have helped you understand how you can implement these and how um, much more effective uh, your development can be. So I'll see you for the next video.